Alright, welcome back everyone. So now we're going to be talking about the existence and uniqueness of our solutions to our ordinary differential equations. So, why do we want to do this? We want to know if our IVP has a solution, right? Well, I've been posing IVPs to you guys for a couple videos now, and we want to know if it has a solution, is it the only one? Now this is important. If you're solving some differential equation, you want to make sure that the solution that you have is the only possible solution to that equation. If not, then what is that really going to tell you? In the last video with the tank problem, if that wasn't the only equation, then who the hell knows how much salt really is in that tank, right? Or similarly, if you're if you're working on a pretty abstract problem and for some reason there's a differential equation that you can't solve, you want to know that even if you can't solve it, is there only going to be one solution if you can, theoretically, with using numerical methods and whatnot? And if you know that there's going to be a solution, then good. You know to not waste your time on that. If you know there is going to be one and just one, then it's worth your time to maybe plug into the computer. So now that we've taken care of that, let me pose to you our first theorem, which is the existence and uniqueness theorem, which says the following. Consider the ODE, which we've always dealt with as the first order linear, dy dt plus p of t times y is equal to g of t. And here the functions p of t and g of t are guaranteed to be continuous on an open interval a to b. So they will have real valued functions and they'll have their limits and they'll be continuous and be very nice and smooth between a and b, not including a and b. And in between this interval there will be some uh, point t0. So if I could quickly show you what I mean on like the on the t-axis if this is a and this is b draw an open circles because we don't include those there's gonna be some value t0 that's within this interval that's of uh, interest right now so then there's there exists a unique function y equals f of t so just any function f of t that satisfies the ODE above and for each t in the open interval a to b that's also going to satisfy y of t0 equals y0. So this just means if I pose you a, a diffy q and I tell you that at y at some value t0, which is right here, right, is equal to y0, which can be whatever number. So if it was like y of 2 equals 1, if I tell you at time equals 2 it's equal to 1, then I know between this interval a to b lies my solution. And I can find every solution in this interval. And that's pretty much the gist of it. So in order to see that, let's do a quick example. So I'll just fit this all on, onto the page. Look at this diffy q. It's t times t minus 4 dy dt plus y is equal to 0. And I tell you that at time equals 2, the ODE will be equal to 1. The question is, use existence and uniqueness to determine the interval where the solution of this IVP exists. OK. So it might be hard to digest theorems at first, but if you follow these four steps, you should be able to get the right answer. Rewrite it the way that the theorem states it, which is a standard form for first order linear of dy dt plus p of t times y is equal to g of t. Note the discontinuities in p of t and g of t. Right? Find the open intervals, the possible open intervals, and then choose the interval that contains your initial condition. Okay. So, once you have all that written down, let's go down here and actually work this problem. So if I rewrite that in the form that I want it, I'll have dy dt plus 1 over t times t minus 4 times y is equal to 0. And I still have my initial condition of y of 2 is equal to 1. OK, look at this part right here. This is of interest. So notice that this is not defined where it's not defined at t equals 0 and t equals 4. Now that's important because then the only possible open intervals that we have if we look at graphically right if we just look at the t-axis if it goes from infinity to minus infinity right I'm telling you at 0 which is here maybe, and 4 which is here, they're not defined, right? So that means that we have this interval here, this interval, and this interval that we want to deal with. So our possible intervals therefore are 
minus infinity to 0 or 0 to 4 or 4 to infinity. Now we're guaranteed if we pose an initial condition and our initial condition isn't at one of these breakpoints that we're going to have a solution to this ODE. So remember at the beginning of the problem when I told you that y of 2 is equal to 1? This 2 is important, right? So because we only care about where t equals 2, we know that we need to pick which interval? Obviously this one. This is where 2 exists. We have all these points, right? And we have 0 and 4, but our t0 in this case is 2. So it's actually right here. And so we're guaranteed that our solution is going to lie right here, not including um, 0 and 4. And so therefore, if we want to find the interval on where our ODE, the solution to our ODE is going to lie, then it's the interval 0, 4, open brackets. That's your answer. Now, this changes based on your initial condition, right? So say if the question was at y of 7 equals 3. It's really about 3, but let's say it was that. Given these top three intervals, since it's at 7, we care about this one, right? So at y of 7 equals 3. So at y of 7 equals 3, we choose interval 4 to infinity. OK? And so that's just the gist of how existence and uniqueness works. Um, so yeah, be sure to practice this a little bit. This is a pretty fundamental concept for all of differential equations, and especially if you keep going on and follow this through, maybe take some PDE courses and some uh, dynamics courses. This will prove very useful. So thanks for listening.